Hello and welcome back to Byju's. Let's start with the daily quiz. First question: Which of the following is correct with respect to death sentence in India? It can only be imposed by the Court of Records, that is, the Supreme Court and the High Courts of India. A death sentence awarded by any High Court has to be certified by the Supreme Court before the execution. Which of the statements mentioned above are correct? One only, two only, both one and two, neither one nor two. You can pause the video and take an attempt at the question. So this question is based on a Hindu news article which talked about nine people getting sentenced to death in one 2016 hooch tragedy. Interestingly, the news article itself talks about the additional district judge awarding the death sentence in this case. Hence, the first statement stands incorrect. Death sentences can be awarded by sessions and additional sessions judges at the lower courts. However, the execution of such a sentence needs to be certified by the high court of the state. Hence, the second statement is also incorrect, and the right answer thus is neither one nor two. In fact, death sentence has always been a bone of contention between groups advocating human rights and groups which see it as having a deterrent effect on future crimes. In fact, post 1978 landmark judgment in the Menka Gandhi case, the constitutionality of death sentence was actually challenged in the Supreme Court. The primary challenges to the death penalty in Bachchan Singh versus State of Punjab in the year 1980. was that the death punishment is unnecessary cruel inhumane and degrading treatment apart from this the punishment of death sentence was also not seen as serving the purpose of deterrence however the supreme court by a majority of 4 is to 1 did not accept this contention and affirmed the constitutional validity of death sentence but propounded the doctrine of the rarest of the rare which i'm sure you hear off and on with respect to death penalties as that the death sentence can only be imposed in the rarest of rare cases when there is no alternative option or punishment deemed fit enough so the right answer in this case is d neither one nor two moving on to the next question consider the following statements with respect to solid fuel ducted ramjet it is a missile propulsion technology jointly developed by india and russia this technology will enable india to develop long range air to air missiles just yesterday drdo successfully carried out a flight demonstration based on solid fuel ducted ramjet sfdr technology from integrated test range chandipur of the coast of odisha on the 5th of march that is obviously yesterday successful demonstration of solid fuel based ducted ramjet technology has provided drdo with a technological advantage which will enable it to develop long range air to air missiles hence the second statement is actually correct at present such technology is available only with a handful of countries in the world so what exactly is a ramjet it is basically a form of air breathing jet engine that uses the engine's forward motion to compress incoming air without an axial compressor or a centrifugal compressor now because ramjets cannot produce thrust at zero air speed they cannot move an aircraft from a standstill a ramjet powered vehicle therefore requires an assisted takeoff like a rocket assist to accelerate it to a speed where it begins to produce thrust ramjets work most efficiently at supersonic speeds around mark 3 that's 3700 kilometers per hour for you this type of engine can operate up to speeds of mark 6 which is a mind boggling 4600 miles per hour or 7400 kilometers per hour the solid fuel ducted ramjet sfdr which was developed under a joint russian r&d project meaning thereby that even the first statement and hence the answer being c achieved a speed of mark 3 on its very first flight the ramjet propulsion system used in the sfdr acts as an oxidizer and the solid propellant reacts as air flows through a solid propellant duct unlike conventional rockets that carry propellant and oxidizer 
ramjet uses the air as an oxidizer just like a jet engine and what about possible usage of sfdr these are to be used in future variants of missiles including an advanced version of astra beyond visual range aam bvr aam expected to extend the range to 150 kilometers in the mk3 version moving on to the next question which of the following statements with respect to election expenditure limit is or are incorrect under section 77 of the representation of the people's act rpa 1951 every candidate shall keep a separate and correct account of all expenditure incurred between the date on which they have been nominated and the date of declaration of the result an incorrect account or expenditure beyond the cap can lead to disqualification of the candidate for up to 3 years see all candidates are required to submit their expenditure statement to the election commission of india eci within 30 days of the completion of the elections or d currently these limits range from 20 lakh to 28 lakh for assembly elections and from 54 lakh to 70 lakh for lok sabha elections firstly what is expenditure limit it is the amount candidates can legally spend for their election campaign and have to account for which includes expenses on public meetings rallies advertisements posters banners vehicles among other things under section 77 of the rpa every candidate shall keep a separate and correct account of all expenditure incurred between the date on which they have been nominated and the date of declaration of the result so statement number 1 is actually correct all candidates are required to submit their expenditure statement to the election commission of india within 30 days of the completion of the election an incorrect account or expenditure beyond the cap can lead to disqualification of the candidate by the election commission of india for up to 3 years under the section 10a of the rpa 1951 so statement number b is also correct now the limit prescribed by the election commission is meant for legitimate expenditure because a lot of money in elections is spent for illegitimate purposes and it also limits the role of money power in elections earlier these limits ranged from rupees 20 lakh to rupees 28 lakh for assembly elections and from rupees 54 to 70 lakhs for the lok sabha elections however last year before the bihar assembly polls the government increased the cap by 10% hence d stands incorrect and is the correct answer this is based on this is based on various hindu news articles related to the coming assembly elections in the four states and one union territory time for a prelims question consider the following statements in the revenue administration of delhi sultanate the in charge of revenue collection was known as amil the ikta system of sultans of delhi was an ancient indigenous institution or three the office of mir bakshi came into existence during the reign of khalji sultans of delhi which of the statements given above is or are correct as far as the evolution of the ikta system is concerned the system started in 1206 with the assignment of different regions as iktas to military commanders out of whose revenues they could maintain themselves and their troops as well iktas basically are the territorial areas or units whose revenues were assigned to officials in lieu of the salaries hence since it was not an ancient indigenous indian institution statement number 2 is actually incorrect this means that you can safely eliminate b and d from the options now you also must be aware that under the mogal central administration mir bakshi was head of the military department so statement number 3 is incorrect as well hence the right answer is a one only in the revenue administration of delhi sultanate the in charge of revenue collection was known as amil it's time for the fact of the day Competition Commission of India. The fact of the day is based on one PIB release published yesterday with reference to the Competition Commission of India organizing the sixth National Conference on Economics of Competition Law through virtual mode. Shri N K Singh, the chairman of the 15th Finance Commission, was a keynote speaker at this conference. Let's see the question. Consider the following statements with respect to Competition Commission of India. 
It is a constitutional body established in 1950. It is responsible for enforcing the Competition Act of 1950. And number three, it is a quasi-judicial body whose purpose is to eliminate practices having adverse effect on competition. Which of the statements is or are true? You can again pause the video and take an attempt at the question. So, Competition Commission of India or CCI is a statutory body and not a constitutional body of the Government of India and is responsible for enforcing the Competition Act of 2002 and not 1950. This means that statements number one and two are both incorrect. Moving on, the Monopolies and Restrictive Trade Practices Act 1969 or the MRTP Act was repealed and replaced by the Competition Act of 2002 on the recommendations of Raghavan Committee. CCI or the Competition Commission of India follows the philosophy of modern competition law. The Act prohibits anti-competitive agreements, abuse of dominant position by enterprises and regulates combinations that is acquisitions, acquiring of control and mergers and acquisitions which causes or is likely to cause an appreciable adverse effect on competition within India. The commission consists of one chairperson and six members as per the Competition Act who shall be appointed by the central government. The commission is a quasi-judicial body which gives opinions to statutory authorities and also deals with other cases. The chairperson and the other members shall be actually whole time members. Its function largely is to eliminate practices having adverse effect on competition, promote and sustain competition, protect the interests of consumers and ensure freedom of trade in the markets of India and to give opinion on competition issues. This means that the right answer is C3 only. That's all for today. Thank you.